What's up, y'all? Brad here, back and fired up to play another F-tier kill team in our newest battle report. I'll be playing a Chaos Demon kill team made up of two Plague Bearer fire teams, featuring 12 of the 20 models that I painted up as part of our most recent video. I'll be fielding 9 regular Plague Bearers, 1 Icon Bearer, 1 Horn Bearer, and 1 Plague Ridden Operative who will act as my leader. All 12 of these guys are super deadly in melee, and with their special disgustingly resilient ability, they can be surprisingly tanky for a horde-style army. This ability lets me roll a die for each wound any of my operatives would take, and if I roll a 5 or a 6, that wound is ignored. It's pretty disgusting. Disgusting. They are fairly slow though, with a base movement of only 4 inches, so it will take some careful maneuvering to make sure I can take advantage of the strengths they have. To help out with this, and to give myself a decent level of flexibility, I've given all operatives except the horn bearer and leader access to the death's head ranged weapon. It only has a 6 inch range, but it can pack a serious punch. Hey there, I'm Vic, and I'm going to be in control of the Greenskins today. I'm using two Orc Boy fire teams. Yeah, boy! Ugh. I have eight straight-up Orc Boys outfitted with sluggers and choppers, two gunners, and a boss knob. It's worth noting that this comp, as well as a few different variations, can be made using one box of boys, as long as you don't get that overpriced, monopose, restrictive, ridiculous one that GW put out last year. I'm also going to say right now that I'm not typically an orc player and think that the orc spelling and pronunciation is incredibly cringe. I'll be using the words that the weapons etc are modeled after and you can deduce for yourself what I mean. Victor hates fun. I do, very much. Now that's out of the way. For equipment, I've given both of my gunners targeting thing and heavy armor. This will help them with their terrible accuracy and terrible defense stats. For this battle, we'll be using the Domination Mission Pack. The kill zone will contain five objectives with two huge 9-inch deployment zones along the short edges of the map. Objectives can be claimed by a friendly operative for 1 AP with claimed objectives remaining under your control until they're reclaimed by an enemy operative. At the end of each turning point, you score 1 VP if two or more objectives are claimed by your team. If you control more objectives than your opponent, you score 1 additional VP and you score 1 VP for each objective you control within your opponent's drop zone. All of the elements that make up the orc outpost, as well as all of the large rock formations, will be treated as heavy terrain. The smaller rocks will be light. We've designated the platform behind the main orc wall and the top of the tallest rock formation as vantage points. We place our barricades and then proceed to set up our operatives. In case you don't remember, Brad and I agreed that whoever finished painting their army first would choose whether they wanted to be attacker or defender in this battle. I've chosen to attack, so Brad sets up first. My primary thought process here when setting up my kill team was, I don't want to get shot on the first turn. I don't need to get some AOE ranged attack garbage taking out half my army before I can even make an activation. So I took a long time to make sure I was safe for as much of the first turning point as possible. In addition, I set my leader up in a position where I could potentially maybe charge someone up on the vantage point in the orc stronghold. I think that might be a very important piece of real estate to hold on to, and my leader just fights that little bit better than all of the other operatives, so I think it was worth putting him here. I think that the key to this mission is controlling the center objective, so I arrange most of my units so that they can get there as soon as possible. I put my rocket launcher gunner behind the central barricade and my big shooter gunner within movement range of the flank vantage point. My leader then gets placed on the edge of my troops with a little more cover than the rest, ready to jump into the action. Next is the scouting phase. We both choose recon and get a free extra dash. Since we both chose the same option in the scouting phase, I get to pick who has initiative as the attacker. 
Obviously, I select myself, and with that, the game begins. Okay, at the beginning of turning point one, we each gain one command point, giving us a total of three. Vic reveals the route tack op as well as challenge, pitting his boy with the blue helmet and axe against one of my ordinary fighters. I reveal central control as well as protect assets, which earns me victory points when I take out two or more enemy operatives within two inches of an objective in the same turning point. This is going to be a tricky one to earn points with, but uh, my other option in the draft was hold the line, which I think on a mission like this with very deep deployment zones is even worse. Okay, first activation. I move the furthest advanced boy up to the center to capture objective number one. I feel like my best chance here is to get as many points as I can in the early game. Brad's units are going to be so hard to kill, so I'm expecting a tough time in the later rounds. Okie dokie! I use my first activation to first claim objective number three with my horn bearer, and then perform the unique Instrument of Chaos action. This lets all of my operatives add an extra inch to their normal moves and charges for the rest of the turning point. An extra inch might not seem like that much, but uh, with a base move of only four inches, it can really make a big difference. Now, I move my big shooter gunner up to this vantage point. Unfortunately, it took a move and a dash to get here, so I'll have to wait for the next turn to rain down upon the horde. Okay, first attack of the game. I move up one of my fighters and chuck a rotten head at one of Vic's orcs. Only one hit goes through though, just three damage dealt. This unchecked aggression man will not stand. We're talking about unchecked aggression here. I retaliate. Nothing happens. Next, I'll move another fighter up and chuck another head. Oh! Oh! Huge roll! Vic's guy is down to one wound. All right, here's an opportunity to score some points. Brad moved my challenge target into the open, so I move the challenger out and fire. Only three wounds go through, but it's a start. All right, well now I activate my Icon Bearer's Demonic Icon ability, which improves the invulnerable save of all of my operatives within three inches of the Icon Bearer for the whole turning point. Then I reposition slightly. I'm just trying to keep the target of Vic's challenge safe. I move another boy and shoot another monster. I roll a crit and a hit and they're both saved. This is already feeling like a long game. All right, another move and shoot, but no wounds go through. All right, I move this man's spiky shoulder pad and shoot at the three-eyed green monster. Finally score a successful hit, but thanks to Disgustingly Resilient, only two wounds go through. But well, that is disgusting crap. All right, just moving this fighter up. I'm trying to set up some good charges for the next turning point. My leader moves back and captures objective number four. Okay, I claim objective number five and then advance toward the center of the map. All right, another move, another shoot. Once again, only two wounds go through. Brutal. Yeah, it's chucking time. I'm chucking another head. I move up with one of my fighters and shoot at the orc near objective one. Finally, you're dead. <laughs> Don't chuck me, bro. Now that there's finally a suitable grouping, my rocket launcher fires. I spend a CP on warp surge here to try and survive, but I roll too badly for it to even matter. I kill the first one, and the second takes one mortal wound from Splash. I move up another fighter. All right, now I'm going to capture objective number two and reposition. All right, nearing the end of the turning point, and I'm a little worried about Victor's big shooter up on that vantage point. It doesn't look like I can make it up to him right now, but I'm going to move my leader closer to the main structure in order to set up a good charge for turning point number two. Obviously, this worries me. My big shooter is quite important, but there isn't much I can do about it right now. I move another boy closer to the center to help fortify that area. All right, now I'm just moving up my last couple of fighters. Overwatch time. My gunner launches a rocket. Save none. <laughs> Come on. That is f***ing disgusting. After some truly disgusting resilience, Brad's unit is down to three wounds, and the pale one behind it is down to six. Okay, making the last activation of turning point one. Just moving up my last operative. Vic currently has control of objective one, as well as the center of the map. This is pretty inevitable though, since his team is so much faster than mine, so I'm not too concerned. 
I think I've done a good job of positioning my operatives well for some great charges, and while I don't want to get too ahead of myself, I am feeling pretty confident. I know that once I get into melee with these guys, I can start unleashing some serious pain. All things considered, I'm pretty happy with where I stand after TP1. As I expected, it's pretty hard to kill these things. I'm happy that I've been able to jump out to an early lead because I do think that Brad will come storming back as his horde slowly erodes my orcs, but at the end of the turning point I gain two victory points for objectives and Brad only gets one. Okay, top of the second turning point. Vix up to 4 CP while I'm up to 3. We roll off and I win initiative. I spend a CP on Contagion, a super strong strategic ploy. Until the end of the turning point, all enemy operatives within 2 inches of any of my operatives are treated as injured. It's a huge effect, especially since I'll be fighting a ton this turn. Vic spends one of his CP on Get Stuck In, and another on Daka Daka Daka. Next, I reveal the Damage Limitation Tack Op, which earns me points if I go an entire turning point without any friendly operatives becoming incapacitated. For a horde style army, this is going to be another tricky one to earn points from. I think I might be able to sneak out a point from it at the very end of the game if Vic runs out of units, but I think that's probably my only shot. Okay, first activation. Like I said, I'm really worried about the orc gunner up on the vantage point, behind cover. My leader is in the perfect spot, so I charge and fight. I really want this to count, so I use a CP here to reroll one of my misses. And I turn it into a hit. After my disgustingly resilient rolls, my leader is down to 5 wounds. <laughs> Vic's gunner, however, has been taken out. That's huge. As my plague-ridden leader raises his sword in victory, he lets out a sickly cry that echoes across the land. Like and subscribe! Click the notification button! Leave a comment if you like this video! Share with your friends! That sucks! My gunner didn't get a chance to do anything. It was definitely an oversight to put him in range of that charge. Now, my challenger shoots his target and kills him. So that's 2vp since I killed him within pistol range, bringing me up to 4 so far. Okay, I charge one of my fighters into one of Vic's forward orcs. We fight, and the orc goes down. My fighter takes some damage though, and is down to only one wound. My gunner launches a rocket at Brad's leader. Unfortunately, after some more resilience, only two wounds land. Now the leader's down to three. Another charge and fight, but I don't roll super well. The orc is down to six wounds, but my plague bearer is down to three. All right, this boy fights the first plague bearer and after killing him, shoots at the other one. All of the shots are saved though. At this point, after looking for some more opportunities to move into close range, I decide I need a little bit of a movement boost. I activate my horn bearer, blow the horn once again, and move up towards the center of the battlefield. All right, I shoot at the leader and everything misses, so now I use the tactical ploy more Daka to reroll everything. I roll a crit and a hit and they're both saved. Brad used warp surge but didn't need any rerolls, so at least I made him waste a CP. I still think it was the right call. You would. All right, well now with my movement buffed, it's time for another charge. I roll well, I kill an orc, and I only take two wounds. All in a day's work. <laughs> Since Brad has Contagion active, I'm kind of forced into relying on the orc's shooting, which is suboptimal. I move and shoot this extremely wounded plague bearer and roll two crits and a hit. I'm feeling pretty good about that until... Yeah, I'm dead. Yeah, he's dead. That's so two crits and a hit. I mean, I could roll two sixes right now, but that'd be fucking nuts. Yeah, I would. <laughs> oh, that's actually fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Another charge and fight. Vic chooses to parry one of my hits, so only eight wounds go through. That leaves my target with only two wounds remaining. This was a pretty big strategic turning point in the game. I chose to parry that one hit so I could just barely keep my orc alive because he was the only thing stopping the floodgates of chaos demons from going into the center and taking that objective in this turning point. After that fight, my leader runs and shoots Brad's 1 HP holdout. One hit, saved. Alright, I move up this snuffleupagus looking bro, throw ahead, and manage to finish off this poor orc. Pork. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, clearly shooting isn't working, so I charge into the 1 HP unit and finally bring him down. I now get one more victory point for route since this happened within 6 inches of Brad's deployment zone. 
Okay, now I charge in with my icon bearer. After a quick fight, another orc lies slain. My axe-wielding challenger does an overwatch attack on the icon bearer. Finally a decent attack and seven wounds go through. All right, well, I come in and throw another head. Nothing spectacular, but I do soften up this orc, bringing him down to seven wounds. All right, this is a huge chance for me. I'm doing an overwatch attack on Brad's leader. If I can kill him here, it will give me two VP, which would go a long way in helping me build a secure lead. I selected the blue dice today because all orcs know that blue is lucky. I beg them for a good roll, and then I get this garbage, made even worse by Brad's girlish laugh afterwards. Get wrecked. My final activation of the turning point, I charge in and fight the orc sitting by objective number one. My plague bearer is taken down to three wounds, but I manage to secure the kill. That's the second orc I've killed this turning point within two inches of an objective, so I actually manage to score a victory point with protect assets. Additionally, I score another point with center control. At the end of the turning point, between tech ops and objectives, I've secured a total of seven victory points, while Brad only has a total of four. So, who do you think is winning here? Not to get ahead of myself, but I feel like I have a definite edge. I'm, I'm behind in points, but, uh, but I have a huge lead in operative count. Uh, so, I don't know, how do you feel? I'm not feeling great. I know I have a decent lead in victory points, but doing the math, I don't see how I'm going to get that many more. So it's just a matter of trying to hold you off and hopefully get a few lucky rolls as things really start to get hairy near the end. Yeah, I am feeling good, but uh, it could definitely go either way. All right, well, turning point number three, of course, we both gain another CP at the start of the turning point, which I immediately use to reactivate Contagion. Especially with all this melee action, I can't not use it. All right, that was a huge initiative roll. I had a feeling that if Brad won, he was just going to run away and hide with his leader. So I used my gunner to fire a rocket while he still gets the chance, and I got him. Just enough wounds go through to take him down. To no one's surprise, I reveal Headhunter and score one more VP. Let the slaughter begin. I charge in and fight with my icon bearer. Another orc dead. I'm starting to feel pretty confident here. Now my leader, enraged by the lack of green in front of him, charges this pale abomination. I kill him and get another VP for route, bringing my total up to nine. Ugh, more fighting. I bring this sad, lonely orc down to four wounds while only taking two myself. What can I say? This game is just easy for people like me. <laughs> My challenger doesn't really have much choice but to fight back. I might get lucky, which I don't. Never feels good to use an activation to kill one of your own units. Okay, I have an interesting choice here. I need my plague bearer at the back wall to make it over to the objective in Vic's back corner so that I can start stealing points. But I would also really like to charge his leader and deny him the ability to overwatch. A tough call, but in the end, my horn bearer blows his horn once more and charges the orc boss knob. I don't fight, but at least he can't shoot with his pistol. So at this point, I had no idea that Brad was thinking all of that, but I guess I just guessed lucky. I overwatch on the plague bearer over by the fan at the back wall and kill him, finally making good on all these extremely wounded units Brad has kicking around. Okay, that's bad. I think I misplayed by not moving that unit first. The boss knob doesn't even really have that great of a ranged weapon, so I'm not sure that was a good call. I was really relying on those points from taking objective number two, and uh, I think my hubris may have gotten the best of me. Well, Snuffleupagus will charge forward and fight the orc leader. After Vic spends a CP to negate a crit with just a scratch, my guy is down to two wounds and the boss knob is down to nine. Then, to finish off the turning point, I move in with my last plague bearer and claim objective one. So at this point, I'm sitting at 10 VP while Brad only has seven. I'm in a pretty rough spot and likely won't be able to earn many or any points beyond this. So all I really need to do is try to play as defensively as I can and pray to the dice gods. Yeah, I do have a pretty commanding lead here in terms of bodies on the board, but I'm a bit concerned that I may have just thrown away my chances by activating some key operatives in a suboptimal order. Okay, I win initiative, which is really important. It feels like we say that every time, but, <laughs> but it really is important. I need to activate my horn bearer first because I really need that extra inch of movement. It's uh, gonna be really important in a future play. 
After he toots his Muzak for one last time, I figure I may as well fight. I want to get the first attack in against the boss knob, just to increase my odds of keeping all my remaining operatives alive and getting a point from damage limitation. We fight, and I kill the leader with one wound remaining. That was close. Whew, really getting down to it. My rocket launching MVP takes a shot at the icon bearer and brings him down, doing one mortal wound to his elephantine companion. Well, there go all my chances of scoring any points with damage limitation. Okay, well, it's time for my super sneaky play here. With the extra inch of movement I get from the Hornbearer's song, I have just enough movement to charge into Vic's final operative. We won't fight though. Vic's gunner is just out of two inch range from objective number four, meaning that killing him won't grant me any points for protect assets. What it does mean though, is that I can claim objective four for myself as the gunner here is just too far away to be able to contest it. We check the rules and yes, you can claim the objective while engaged. <laughs> this charge with the extra movement from the horn bearer was the only way I was able to get close enough. This represents a 2vp swing and is huge. Yeah, I was not expecting that. I definitely thought I was far enough away and wouldn't have to deal with it. Can definitely chalk up this play as one of those things that feels like cheating, but definitely isn't cheating, but definitely felt a bit sus at the time. Nah, you're just mad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no way either of us can score any more or deny any more VP, but for the fun of it, with my last activation, I charge and fight Vic's gunner. A good roll, and the last orc has been defeated. Vic has been tabled! Well, that doesn't matter at all, but the final <laughs> score... <laughs> The final scores are in. Brad gains three VP for objectives and I gain none, bringing the final score to 10 all. We draw. We love draws. We shake hands. Man, this game was so fun and so close. Uh, I think at the end there, we both had a win within our grasp and we both made some miscalculations, but we only got there because we both made some really good plays. So I think we played about evenly and we came out with exactly the same score, so it showed. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a lot of fun to play kind of well-balanced, but not necessarily meta teams. You play a bit differently and see some different things in the game, and I absolutely love this matchup, and I think that a draw is the best possible outcome. I just, I love playing bad teams, but making them work, and even though it's bad team versus bad team, it was still a competitive match, because we were both bad. Lots of fun, and honestly, I think this is one of the best games of Kill Team I've ever played. Yep, agreed. And if you liked what you saw, make sure to check out the video that we're going to link in the top right corner where you can see us building and painting these two armies in just 12 hours. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the ridiculous stuff we're doing. Peace, y'all. <laughs> see you next time.